Now that you've created a Visual Studio MVC 2017 project from our last video, let's take a look at uh, what we can do with that project. Let's go ahead and open your application. Hopefully you still have it open. We called it first web application. So open that up and I want you to go to the controllers folder. In that controllers folder, you have a file called homecontroller.cs. CS stands for C Sharp. We're going to open that file and take a look at what goes on in that controller. Remember that we said that in MVC, the M stands for model, which is the data. The V stands for view, which is the web page. And the C stands for controller, which is the manager in between the model and the view. In other words, it turns to the model and says, hey, model, do you have any data? that I need to work with for this view and the model says here's the data and then it turns to the view and says here's what you need now go show yourself hey browser here you go and it sends the view to the browser so all of your C-sharp logic uh, or business rules that you might write for the application are going to take place in your controller so here's the home controller now when I first started off with Visual Studio I really struggled with the word controller because I kept thinking well I don't like that word. I want to make my own word. That's a special key word that Visual Studio will look for when you run your application. For instance, let's go ahead and run this application one more time and just take a look at what's happening out there. When I access the URL for that controller and I type in localhost, that simply just says localhost is we're just running on our own computer right now. If this was published out to the web, then you'd see www.whatever.com for the URL. I'm going to put a slash. This slash says, what controller do you want to go to? If I type in the word home, then it says, in your website, go look for a controller called home. Now, I look over here under controllers, and I don't see one called home, but I do see one called home controller. This is where you just have to understand this is what Visual Studio and .NET does. When it looks for a controller, it removes the word controller and only looks for the other part of the word. So do we have a, a controller called Home? We actually do. It's called Home Controller, but Visual Studio just sees that as being Home. So back on the web page, when I say Home, that's really looking for something like that, Home Controller. We don't type that word in, and if we did, it's not going to work. Then we have a slash, and then it says, what method do you want to call inside of that controller? By default, when you created your Visual Studio MVC application, it made your home controller for you, which is of type controller, and then it made three methods. One is called index, one is called about, and one is called contact. When you work with an HTML website, if you just type in the URL, www.learn.com, whatever website that is, if you didn't put anything else after that, then by default, it's going to go look for a HTML file called index. That same thing happens with Visual Studio. If you only type in a controller name and you do not type an action method or a, a method name in that controller, then it tries to find the word index. Now, why is it doing that? Part of that is because of what we have back in a file called the route config, which says the default controller is home and the default action is index. So that's why if you just go view a web page in your, like what we did over here, it said we didn't type in a controller name or a method, so it tries to find the home controller and the index method. If I typed in slash home slash about, then that would say go to your website, go to the home controller, and in the home controller find a method called about, and then go return a view with the same name. Now the reason it's the same name is because we don't have anything inside the parentheses. So .NET says if you return a view with no name, then it goes to your view folder. So 
right here. And it says, what's the name of your, your controller you're working with? Home controller, really, just home. So it looks for a subfolder with the same name, home. And then it says, the method was called about. Do we have a view also called about? And we do, right there. And so when we say return view, it now returns that web page. If I said home slash contact, it would do the same thing. It would come out to the home controller, try to find a method called contact, which it found, and it says return view. So then it would look for a view with the same name. So when I came back over to this web page and I said home controller contact, it goes to the home controller, looks for a method called contact, and says, what do you want me to do? Well, we want to return a view to the browser. Does the view have any information in it? No. So it tries to find a view with the same name in the views home subfolder, because we're in the home controller. And there's the contact view. And so it should return that view to the browser, which it does. So that's how the relationship works between a controller and the actual view. Well, let's go and change the controller. Right now, for the index controller, which is our default one, that if I came, if I ran the application one more time and I didn't type anything in, remember it says it goes to the home controller. And since we didn't specify a method name, it just goes to the index controller. So that is the same as that. And this is what the index looks like because that's the actual index view, which is right there. So what if in my home controller, instead of saying, I want to return a view, let's say that I just want to return a string. And I'm going to type in a string that says, hello world. Yes, there's, you just can't get away from the hello world application. We're still around. So if I ran that, now it says when we run our web application, let's go to the home controller, go to the index method, and the index method says, let's just return a string, hello world, to the browser. And the browser says, oh, hello string, I'm going to go ahead and display you inside of my browser. And there it is. Now, can I still go to any other controller? Sure, there's my home controller. Can I still go to the about method? which would say, go to the About view. And it says, yeah, I can still get there because I'm just accessing a controller name and a method name in the controller. And I still go back to the index method, which says, go return the string, hello world. Sure. So what we would see in our methods inside the controller is that we're just doing C-sharp logic. If I want to return an HTML view, then the parameter of what I'm returning is action result. And I would actually say the word view on the return, which once again, since there's no parameters, it says go find a view with the same name as the method in the subfolder of the name of the controller. Let's try something else. What else can we return from a method? So instead of saying return view, you already saw you could return a string, but I could have another method, and I could say redirect, and I could specify where I want to redirect to. Redirect says, what URL do you want to go to? So I could type in a new URL. This now says when I run the application, it will look at the home controller, look at the index method, and then immediately send us to that web link. Let's see if it works. So instead of seeing that default index view that we showed earlier with the jumbotron and, and all the buttons, let's see if this instead redirects us to the BYU EDU website. And it automatically does redirect right there. And we did that because we said to the browser, instead of actually working with a view object, let's look at this other URL. So it redirects us. Let's go ahead and close that. 
Let's come back to here. Instead of saying redirect, let's try a different one. Let's say redirect to action. Redirect to action says, what method would you rather I call? Rather than returning an object, what method in this controller? So let's say if we ever go to index, we instead want to redirect to the about method. So let's see if the about uh, view is the first view that gets displayed. So redirect says redirect to our URL. Redirect to action says go find a method with that name in the controller and call that method instead. And there's the about. The other thing we could do is we could pass other parameters to the redirect to action. First parameter is the method name. The second parameter is the controller name. So this says go to the home controller and find a method called about and transfer control to that method instead. So we should see the about page show up one more time. And there's the about view. Another parameter. The third position is actually called a parameter. I can pass parameters to these different action methods inside the controller. And the way you do it is you type in the word new because you're making a new object, which is a parameter, and then you give it some variable name, whatever you want to call it. In this case, I want to go ahead and call it inum, and I'll assign it the value of 5, make sure that it's inside of curly braces. But you need to realize that we said go call the about method in the home controller, which is right here, and send it the value of 5 to the parameter called inum. But if you notice, I don't have any parameters inside that method. So if I try to run this program right now, and it runs home controller index method, which says go to the about method, pass a parameter to it, Visual Studio and the .NET Framework is going to say, you know what, I've got a parameter here, but I'm not really doing anything with that. So what do you want to do? What we need to actually do is say, we've got a parameter coming into this method. So let's give it a name. And let's match that name of what we said over here it was going to receive. I'm just going to change that and say whatever we receive, we want to go and display it in this message. So let's see if the number 5 now shows up in that about view. And I'll explain why it actually shows up once we look at it. So it now says go to the home index. Hey, home index, redirect to home about. Hey, about, grab your view called about, display it. There's our parameter. Now, how did that actually work? because we're using something called the view bag. The view bag is simply a dictionary data structure. Remember, dictionary data structures have a key and a value. This key is called message. The value is what I just assigned there. I could make up any key and value that I want. I could say viewbag.greg equals a string called stuff. I could say viewbag. Um, Baseball equals Rockies. And you can put any data type. You can put objects, lists, strings, ints, whatever you want inside the view bag, and it just creates a brand new key and assigns a value to it. Over in the view, it automatically receives the view bag. And there's one view bag per view. So let's go look at that about view in the home subfolder. There's the about view. And it said, Hey, for an H2 tag, let's display that. For an H3 tag, let's display that. Let's just do this. Let's say for a P tag, let's go ahead and display the view bag dot Greg. And for the next P tag, let's display the view bag dot baseball. Spelled correctly would help. Notice this is where it said viewbag.message. Now, there's a little ampersand sign in front of it. What does that mean? Let me go ahead and run it. Notice I did not do that here. Let's run it. Remember in the source code, I assigned the value of inum, which was our parameter, to the viewbag message. 
and in the view it said display the view bag message. That's why the number five showed up. Now in this case, it said you have an error because there's nothing in inum. You might get this when you try to do the work. That's because wherever I'm looking at view-wise in Visual Studio, right now I'm looking at about, it says, hey, what method am I really attached to? I'm attached to this one. And it says, do I have a parameter? Nope. Because I'm trying to start my application now on the about view. If I started running this application on index, then I can make sure that the proper chain of command of methods is actually being called. Because now I'm going to start at the home index, who in turn called the about method. And there's our parameter that came through that was stored in the view bag message. Notice I display viewbag.greg and viewbag.baseball. Now, why doesn't it actually display the contents of that? That's because I didn't put an at sign in front of that. The at sign allows you to do something called Razor. Razor says, I can embed C-sharp code inside of my HTML. So if I ran this one more time, it says, go access the data structure view bag. That's what the at sign says, Razor. Go access the data structure view bag. Once again, where did I try to start it from? The about view, does it have a parameter? Nope, I didn't go through the proper chain of command. Make sure index is highlighted. Run it through Chrome. Now it's going to do the proper chain of command. Go to index, get the parameter that we're passing to the about view. And then it says, go to the view bag. What's inside of that key called Greg? And you remember, we stored the word stuff in Greg and Rockies in baseball. And so it says, resolve that. Go look at that data structure. Go to that key, resolve the value. Go to that data structure, resolve the key value. That's why it says stuff and Rockies. And that's going to be called Razor. So now what you've seen in this video is that you can actually return to a different URL or redirect to a different method in a controller. And you can actually pass parameters to that new method. You can work with a data structure, a dictionary data structure called view bag, which automatically gets passed to the view. And you've seen that you can put an at sign in front of that to say, we're working with C-sharp code. This says, do a C-sharp block of code. Assign the data dictionary view bag title to be the word about. From here, we're going to see how to start working with Razor and how to work with other controllers.